Rewilding the sea is a very different thing to rewilding the land because the sea is much more dynamic. 97% of the habitable space on the planet is in the ocean. So if you're to bring back bits of the ocean that have been overexploited in the past, like the Sonat has, it's a big job. After years of planning, the Blue Marine Foundation is reintroducing the once abundant native oyster to specially selected sites on the south coast of England. Working with partners from across the region, their aim is to restore self-sustaining populations of this vitally important species, which itself provides a habitat for many others. It's really, really important that we restore these kind of habitats and, and it's something that I'm very passionate about. It's been a huge collaboration and years of planning and here we are at the big moment and everything has fallen into place. What the team does now has to be just right and each stage will be time critical. It's going to involve a lot of people and some major logistics. We're here in Langston Harbour and we are deploying our 15,000 oysters onto our reef. Really exciting time. We've only just really got to beginning at scale rewilding. You know, this, this could be the beginning of something much bigger than we've done before. The Solent is a busy waterway running between mainland England and the Isle of Wight. Covering over 500 square kilometres, this major estuary system is unique in the UK and Europe. The Solent has a unique combination of dynamic marine and estuarine habitats, a vast complex of harbours, spits, sandbanks and numerous small islands. Jess Taylor works for Natural England, which conserves, enhances and manages the natural environment in the region. Here we can find the largest number of small estuaries in the tightest cluster anywhere in Great Britain, and it also has one of the most biodiverse sites anywhere in English waters. Not surprisingly, this rich and complex marine environment is bursting with life. All across the Solent, Salt marshes, seagrass meadows, mud flats and oyster reefs provide refuge and food for fish and shellfish, such as king scallops, cockles, herring and cuttlefish. There's a huge range of other species, from sharks to sand eels, and even seahorses. Endangered European eels and thresher sharks are also known to find sanctuary here not to mention harbour seals and grey seals, even bottlenosed and common dolphins. Many people know the Solent for its internationally important breeding seabird colonies, which has over 12,000 pairs of things like terns and gulls. The estuary complex is also an internationally important wintering ground for over 125,000 ducks, geese and waders, of particular importance is the local population of dark-bellied Brent geese, where we have over 10% of the world's population. The Solent's estuary system is also increasingly being recognised for its vital blue carbon habitats, which are helping us tackle climate change. Salt marshes and seagrass meadows in particular draw down huge amounts of carbon, locking it safely away in their sediments. But without doubt, one of the most important species in the Solent is the humble oyster, a shellfish that grows in colonies on the seabed, building up an oyster reef of shells, a habitat that provides a home for over 450 other species. When you reintroduce oysters, you're creating an entire habitat, so the whole ecosystem benefits from day one, and a healthy new oyster reef will start fixing carbon too. And while they're doing that, the oysters are also cleaning the water. Just one oyster filters and cleans up to 200 litres of water every day. 
A healthy oyster reef could have tens of thousands of oysters on it. It's an amazing water cleaning service. The oyster is such an important species for so many reasons. By creating seabed habitat and cleaning the water, the oyster underpins the fabric of the entire marine system. It's a pollution-busting, carbon-guzzling ecosystem engineer. Oysters feed people too. Right back to Roman times, the Solent has supported a significant oyster fishery. Chloe Smith works at the Inshore Fisheries and Conservation Authority, or IFCA, which was established in 2011 to improve the long-term management of fisheries along the south coast. Historically, the oyster fishery in the Solent was really important. It supported approximately 450 vessels, and that in turn supported over 700 men, women and obviously families as well. That doesn't include those people that it would have supported on the shore in processing plants. The fishery annually used to bring in hundreds of tonnes of oysters and of course those oysters weren't just important to the fishermen, they provided really key ecosystem services within the Solent, they filtered the water, they provided habitats for other important fish species as well. But since that heyday, all of the important habitats of the Solent have been under pressure. Over half of the Solent salt marsh has been lost, and all of the seagrass meadows that remain are in poor condition. Meanwhile, over 95% of the oysters have been lost. Oysters declined in the Solent due to a number of reasons. Pollution and a pathogen which kills oysters before they mature are, are part of the cause, as well as fishing and climate change and a number of other reasons and scientists have widely accepted now that it was a combination of all these different factors that led to the decline of the oyster fishery. We're now left with mere fragments of the oyster reefs which once thrived here, making it harder for populations to recover on their own. At present, oysters in the Solon are really sparse and quite spread out, which doesn't work well for their breeding strategy. The female needs to take in the sperm in order to fertilise her eggs. The Solent Oyster Restoration Project is really important to help overcome this issue. Providing areas where there's a dense population of oysters will hopefully enable them to breed successfully and repopulate the area. The Solent is our biggest oyster restoration project uh, for us at Blue, Blue Marine Foundation. Um, it, it, it is not the only one but this is the one that's the make or break. This is the biggest, was the biggest oyster fishery in Europe, and it's gone. So if we can bring this back, the hope that that will give people will be enormous. The return of the oyster fishery in the Solent would be really important for the local fishing industry. Many of the fishers who used to operate in the oyster fishery still fish in the area today, and therefore it provide a valuable source of income for them. It's in everyone's interests to bring the oysters back, so plans were laid to build new oyster reefs across the Solent. But these precious new reef sites had to be carefully selected. The IFCA assisted Blue Marine Foundation to identify a number of potential sites for oyster beds in the Solent. And our local knowledge of the area and understanding of the fisheries management in place really helped with that. Particularly the Langston Harbour site, which is protected by our bottom toed fishing gear bylaw, so no bottom toed gear can be fished in that area. Langston Harbour is a great place to start the restoration work because the seabed is legally protected from damaging activities. This is very exciting because this is really taking the oysters out into the wild uh, in a way that might really see a big surge of reproduction. I think it would take a long time, but I think we'll succeed in the end. This mammoth task, seven years in the making, has reached its most important moment. As with building any home, the first job is to lay the foundations. In this case, a mixture of gravel and shells known as culch. This will give the oysters a perfect place to live and breed. Dr. Luke Helmer is overseeing the logistics across this crucial next week as a brand new oyster reef is built from scratch. Building an entire oyster reef from the bottom up requires some serious machinery. 
we're down here at Forley Waterside with the guys from Mid Hand Quarry who are loading the barge with all of our gravel and our colch. So you can see the uh, big clamshell and a massive excavator here. We've got about 60 cubic meters of cockle shell and reject gravel that's about 30 to 60 mil and that's going to be deposited on the reef. The barge will take two hours to be pushed from the quarry at Forley through the Solent to the entrance to Langston Harbour. This gives the team just enough time to drive to Portsmouth and prepare the support boat. We'll see you shortly then. Okay, so the barge is on its way round. We're just gonna go and jump on the workboat and head to the drop site. Loaded with 60 cubic meters of gravel, the barge is honing in on the drop site. The Blue Marine team are close behind in a workboat, coordinating with the dredging crew. Depositing this new reef material is no simple task. A huge floating excavator is ready to carefully lift and drop the shell and gravel. This process will be repeated every day for a week. Okay, so we're on our construction site at sea. We are building the first oyster restoration reef here in the Solent in Langston Harbour. You can see the excavator behind me actually depositing the shell and gravel material onto the seabed in quite a controlled manner so that we don't get a big plume and so that it's at the right depth as well. So we've just finished day two of our oyster reef deployment here in Langston Harbour. The barge came up through the main run into our reef drop site where they've deposited that shell and gravel material onto our reef area. The next steps is for us to go and collect our oysters, run them through our biosecurity protocol and then actually deploy them on the reef out in the middle of the harbour. The first oysters to populate the new reef are collected from a loch in Scotland. They need to be driven down to Portsmouth on the same day to keep them in good condition before their final health and biosecurity checks. So we've just driven down from Scotland, a 12 hour trip. Uh, we've got our native oysters from up there and we are just putting them into our buckets here to go into our holding tank. We get them out in the lab, do all the biosecurity checks, make sure they're the right species, there's no other critters in there. Thousands of European oysters have to be carefully offloaded, a painstaking process after a 12 hour drive. Now that the oysters are settled, the team needs some well-earned rest. Tomorrow they'll sort, clean and count the oysters, a process that'll require an army of volunteers. So we're down here in Portsmouth at the Institute of Marine Sciences. Behind me we've got a load of volunteers who are set up on different stations. We've got a first station where the oysters are sorted, so any crabs and other sea squirts and things like that are taken out. We've then got another couple of teams who are measuring all the oysters, so taking a few different measurements and their weights so that we know in the future how well they're doing, how well they're surviving and how well they're growing. Our final stage is to go through the cleaning process and on Monday we'll be throwing these out on the reef, which is really exciting. There are 15,000 oysters to clean and process today, all carefully laid in special tanks to acclimatise by the end of the day. The buckets just keep coming, and we're not even halfway there yet. This thorough but essential process makes sure that the new oyster reef gets the best possible start as it breathes life back into the Solent.
You might think this looks like a heck of a lot of work and wonder if it's really worth it. Does marine restoration like this really work? Well, yes, it does. In Australia, people have been working with an almost identical species of oyster to our solent ones. They've been rapidly ramping up restoration efforts, creating over 30 hectares of new oyster reefs over five years, and recorded many, many native oysters, recruiting thousands to these sites. Back in the UK, Operation Oyster has deployed recreational divers to search for remnant populations of native oysters around the British Isles. If we know there are oysters surviving and are reaching a decent size in an area, then with the right interventions and protections, we can give them the helping hand they need to really kickstart the rewilding process and repopulate an area. Rewilding the sea is a relatively new idea, but we're discovering that if marine ecosystems are given the chance to recover, they bounce back much faster than we could ever have dared imagine. Whether it's taking the pressure off and letting marine life recover on its own, or giving nature a helping hand like this work in the Solent, ocean recovery really is more possible than many had previously thought. The sea is out of sight and out of mind. It's under the waves. People don't know what's happened there. The realisation that we have overexploited our seas as we have overexploited some of our land has come very much later than, than what happened in the terrestrial environment. And, and we are only now putting it all together and understanding what we've done and trying to put some of it back. But the amazing thing about the sea is that it's dynamic and you can do this and it's actually more dynamic than the terrestrial environment in so many ways. And if you manage the fish stocks right, if you put back the oysters, there will be the most fantastic ecosystem. And you can do this. It's a solvable problem in many cases. In the future, the project is hoping to take oyster restoration to the next level, drawing on the research expertise of Dr Joanne Preston and her team at the University of Portsmouth. Together, their aim is to start breeding oysters at scale in a restoration-focused hatchery. By using local oyster breeding stock, the offspring produced will be perfectly suited to the Solent, giving them the best chance of survival. Perfecting this process will require significant research and development. European oysters are particularly sensitive creatures, so the conditions must be just right. Monica Fabra from the University of Portsmouth team works in the oyster hatchery, fine-tuning the perfect recipe for oyster production. So this is our brewstock room where we keep our adult oysters. Um, actually this uh, system is split in two different systems. Uh, this part is where we uh, run experiments with our oysters and the other side is when, where we do the production. So we keep our adult oysters here in these tanks. When they reproduce and they release the larvae in the water, uh, we try to catch them through these sieves. When they spawn, we take them and we move them to the larval room, the next room. After the tiny larvae have been caught in the sieves, they're counted with the help of a microscope and a computer. Just one oyster can produce over a million offspring. The hatchery aims to help as many as possible to reach maturity. The larval room protects the young until they can settle on their own. So this is our beautiful larval room. So once they spawn and they release the larvae, we take the larvae and we move them here. Every day we feed the, we feed, uh, the larvae with the algae that we produce. This is our nursery. We let them settle in these tanks. We actually add culch, which is uh, basically um, empty oyster shells. We put them in bags and we, we put the bags in these tanks and we keep them in for a few weeks and then we transfer them to the natural environment. Um, so we deploy them. 
Once Monica's research has helped refine the process, this hatchery hopes to produce a steady supply of healthy young oysters for new reef restoration sites in the Solent, as well as helping inform other restoration projects around the world. Right now, it's the moment of truth for the new Langston Harbour Reef. The oysters from Scotland have been checked and cleaned and are now ready for their new home in the Solent. This is actually taking the oysters out into the bay, into Langston Harbour, and, and hoping that, that, that we can recreate an entire ecosystem because the oysters are host to you know, something like 400 different species. So you put the oysters down, the oysters thrive, you get a lot of other things, all of which are attracted to the oysters like magnets. The team are focused on getting everything just right. The oysters must be dropped at the precise location the culch was previously laid. Timing is everything. I can't believe it, the last seven years have come down to this moment. It's make or break. We're about to chuck the oysters on the reef. A local fisherman guides them in. So it's the final stage of the whole process. We're here in Langston Harbour and we are deploying our 15,000 oysters onto our reef. Really exciting times. The guys here pushing them over as we speak. In the making, a new reef is born. The rewilding of the Solent has begun. 15,000 oysters found a new home today and they'll soon be joined by tens of thousands more. These new reefs should help seed other areas with native oysters. We have been carrying out an annual oyster survey for approximately 35 years and this gives us a really good database and information to compare those oyster populations to in the future if they do increase again. The ambition is to keep the process going, building a network of strategically placed reefs to enable self-sustaining populations to be restored across the Solent. The Solent Oyster Restoration Project represents a ray of hope for the Solent and its wonderful marine life. It embodies the idea that restoration and rewilding can work and we can actively help our precious marine ecosystems to recover and thrive once more. Restoring oyster reefs are part of a huge collaborative effort to try and reconnect habitats in the region. It's been such a brilliant collaboration between so many partners all doing their bit to make it all happen. It's been a case of bringing people together to put nature back together. It's such a great feeling. The weather just about held out for us and we've learned so many lessons that will be really useful as we move forward with our future projects. But I think now it's time to celebrate. I think today has been a tremendous success. The team worked incredibly hard to get us to this point of laying 15,000 oysters in, in one day. It's just really quite a logistical feat. And so I'm immensely proud of them. And I think, you know, this, this could be the beginning of something much bigger than we've done before. <laughs>